Today's lesson is called A King's Nightmare. Our story about Daniel continues. Remember, Daniel and his three friends were taken by the Babylonians from their home in Jerusalem all the way back to a city called Babylon. They worshipped idols in Babylon. But did Daniel and his friends worship idols? Oh no, they loved the living God in heaven. In our story last week, we learned how Daniel and his friends chose to obey God and eat good, healthy food instead of King Nebuchadnezzar's food. Did God help them to be strong and healthy? Yes, he did. Now Daniel and his friends worked for King Nebuchadnezzar. God was taking care of Daniel and his friends. One night, when King Nebuchadnezzar went to bed, he fell asleep and had a dream. It was a terrible dream which made him afraid. But when he woke up, he couldn't remember the dream. The more he thought about it, the more upset he got because he couldn't remember. He knew it was an important dream and had to find out what it was. Who do you think he asked to help him remember his dream? King Nebuchadnezzar called in his wise men and told them to tell the king his dream. But could they? Oh no, that was impossible, they said. Were they right? Yes, it would be impossible for anyone to tell the king his dream. So the wise men were not so wise after all. The king got very angry. He said if they didn't tell him what he had dreamed and what the dream meant, he would kill them. But if they could tell him the dream, the king promised to give them many nice gifts. But the wise men couldn't tell what Nebuchadnezzar dreamed. They just didn't know. When Nebuchadnezzar realised that those wise men couldn't help him, he was furious and told his helper Arioch to kill all the wise men in Babylon. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah were some of Nebuchadnezzar's wise men. But they hadn't been in the king's palace that day, so they didn't know anything about the king's dream. They must have been very surprised when Ariok found them and said that he had come to kill them. But God helped Daniel to be very wise. He politely asked why the king had ordered all the wise men to be killed. Arioch told Daniel about the king and his dream. Daniel hurried to see King Nebuchadnezzar and asked him for some time to find out what the king dreamed. King Nebuchadnezzar agreed to wait and Daniel went to his house and told his three friends what had happened. Together they knelt down and prayed. They asked God to please tell them the king's dream so that they would not be killed. Did God help Daniel know the secret of the king's dream? That night, God gave Daniel the very same dream he had given to Nebuchadnezzar and told Daniel what the dream meant. How happy Daniel was when he woke up. The first thing he did was to pray again and thank God for helping them. Daniel hurried back to Arioch and told him not to destroy the wise men of Babylon and to take him to the king. When Nebuchadnezzar saw Daniel, he asked, Are you able to make known to me the dream which I have seen and its interpretation? Daniel told him that no man can tell him what the dream is, but the God of heaven can. Only God knows what will happen in the future, and only God knows the secret of the king's dream. Then Daniel told Nebuchadnezzar his dream. The king listened eagerly as Daniel told him exactly what had happened in his dream. Nebuchadnezzar was so happy to finally remember his dream. But what did the strange dream mean? Would you like to know what the king's dream was? In his dream, King Nebuchadnezzar saw a huge image like an idol in the form of a man. It was very impressive and tall. The image was made of different kinds of metal. The head was made of gold. Look how bright it looks. 
Its chest and arms were made of silver. Look how shiny it is. Its belly and thighs were made of brass. Its legs were made of iron. And its feet were made partly of iron and partly of clay. As the king was watching his dream, a stone was cut out, but not by any human hands. The stone came and hit the image on its feet. Then the whole image was smashed to pieces and crushed together. The wind carried the dust away. The stone that hit the image grew into a huge mountain that filled the whole earth. What a strange dream. What does it all mean? Daniel told the king what his dream meant. Let's see if you can remember all the parts of the huge image of a man. Ready? Can you remember what metal was its head? Gold. The gold head represented the kingdom of Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon, so that part of the dream was about him. But Babylon wouldn't last forever. What metal was the arms and chest made from? Silver. After the kingdom of Babylon, there was to be a second kingdom. Who remembers what the belly and thighs were made out of? Brass. After the silver kingdom, there was going to be a third kingdom. What about the legs? What were they made from? Iron. So after the brass kingdom, there was going to be a fourth kingdom. It was going to be as strong as iron. The last kingdom was made of iron and clay. Iron and clay don't stick together very well. So this last kingdom isn't a kingdom that works very well together. This kingdom is divided into many parts. Some parts are strong like iron and some parts are weak as clay. No matter how hard people tried, they wouldn't be able to make a combined kingdom. Then what did Daniel say would happen after that? The big stone that came down will be the very last kingdom of all. Do you know who is the king of that kingdom? This is God's kingdom that will last forever and ever. God's kingdom will put an end to all of earth's kingdoms when Jesus finally comes back. Daniel ended by saying, the dream is certain and its interpretation is sure. How amazed Nebuchadnezzar was as he listened to Daniel. God had helped Daniel tell the king his dream and its meaning. Now Nebuchadnezzar knew that the God Daniel worshipped is the true God. None of the wise men, except Daniel, had been able to tell him his dream or what it meant. The wise men worshipped idols, but those idols hadn't helped them know the forgotten dream. But the true God of heaven told Daniel the dream. Isn't God amazing? The dream that King Nebuchadnezzar had was something called a prophecy. That means that it was showing what the future was going to be. Remember, only God can really tell what the future is. That's why no one else could know the dream and no one else could know the meaning. God had to show Daniel the dream and tell him its meaning so that the king could understand it. Did you know that almost every part of the prophecy of the dream has happened? True. Do you remember which kingdom was the head of gold? That was King Nebuchadnezzar, Babylon, 
Well, after Babylon came a kingdom called Medo-Persia, represented by the silver. And after Medo-Persia came a kingdom called Greece, represented by the brass. After Greece came a kingdom called Rome, represented by the iron legs. And after that, do you remember what it was, boys and girls? It was a feat made of iron and clay. And the last part of the dream, who remembers what it was? That's when a big stone came and smashed the image on the feet to pieces. The stone came and set up an everlasting kingdom. Do you know what the stone represents? Yes, the stone represents Jesus coming back. And he's coming back very soon, Sabbath school class. What a wonderful day that will be. Are you getting ready? Do you know how to get ready for Jesus coming back? We need to read our Bible every day. We need to pray every day. And we need to tell our friends about Jesus too, so that they will be ready. So I hope every day you are getting ready. Let's be ready for Jesus because he's coming back very soon. Put your hand up if you want to be ready for Jesus. I do. I hope you do too. Let's all be ready because Jesus is coming back soon. Today's memory verse is from Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. Let's say it together. Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants the prophets. Amos 3 7. Well, I hope you liked today's story about King Nebuchadnezzar's dream of the strange statue of the different metals. I hope you remembered them all. Well, until next time, let's pray before we leave. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the story of Daniel and King Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Lord, we know that only you can tell the future. And so, Lord, we love you and we trust you. And we pray that you will help us every day to read our Bibles, to pray to you, and to be good missionaries by telling our friends about Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Please be with us this week. Bless our families and keep us safe. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, happy Sabbath, everyone. Until next time. Bye.